afternoon I have a very important prophetic message I would like to share as instructed and inspired by God the Holy Spirit. Uh, and I've entitled it Filled with the Fullness of God. It is prophetic because it is not something we have experienced yet but it is something that is in the immediate future that is imminent for the church. It is a prophetic truth that many, many of us in the church are not aware of. For those who maybe have read it or have seen it, I believe that we have not really grasped the import of what the Lord is saying. I must be honest that I myself, it's in the last few years, when I say maybe about four or five years, that I've come to embrace it more than I had done in the past. And God gave me a new dimension of uh, instructions concerning this as I believe with all my heart that in the coming year 2020 and the decade we will experience this shall we bow to pray father we come in Jesus name we thank you for your wonderful presence we enter your word with the reverence that it deserves knowing fully well the limitations of our natural human minds to comprehend and to grasp your infinite wisdom that has been compressed into the written word. We therefore see our need for supernatural help, fresh unction and anointing from heaven, firstly upon my heart and my lips, and indeed I would speak indeed as I should as an oracle of God. Secondly, I pray that you put the same unction and anointing upon the ears and the hearts of everybody that will hear me those who are physically present here, those who will hear me remotely, electronically, so that the word will flow freely from you through me to the people to do an internal and eternal work in all of our hearts, including my own in particular, to cause our wills to become more humble, our minds to be more enlightened with revelation knowledge, our emotions to be more tempered and controlled by the power of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. I also pray as I speak, the power of the Spirit of God be released from you in sufficient measure to follow these words and back them wherever they are heard and releasing all the earth. Yea, power that will heal, power that will deliver, power that will break yokes, power that will free men so that they will become doers of the things that they hear and not hearers only. I further pray for mercy to be faithful so that indeed I will deliver the word with the with precision, redeeming the time, saying only what you want me to say, bringing out of the treasure of this word things new and old, indeed as a scribe instructed unto the kingdom. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. And all those in agreement with me, receiving all the blessings I mentioned, agreed and said, filled with all the fullness of God. As a young Christian, uh, my first year of getting born again and filled with the Holy Spirit, I was blessed to be instructed and taught by Kenneth Hagan to pray what we call the Ephesian Pauline Prayer. Interestingly, I, as far as I know, only Kenneth Hagen in our own generation, when I say our generation, I'm talking about the last 50 to 100 years, that has actually emphasized this from and E.W. Kenyon. Every person I, I know that has said it, heard it from them. Uh, Paul prayed some very, very strategic prophetic prayers for the church 
and Kenneth Hagen and uh, E.W. Kenyon called them the Pauline prayers because they were prayed by Paul. In particular, in the book of Ephesians, there are two of them. The first one is the one that I was instructed and I was taught that I should pray daily. I learned the example from Kenneth Hagen. He, he himself was led by the Spirit of God to pray that prayer for himself over a six-month period in, I believe it, the year was 1949. It was just after World War II. Everybody was expecting a great move of God in America. In fact, if I remember rightly, a prophetic revelation had come that after World War II, there's going to become a mighty move of God. And it did come. And Kenneth Hagin was a part of it. Many great men of God, like um, William Branham, uh, uh, George Warnock, Gordon Lindsay, A.A. A. Allen, Oral Roberts, T.L. Osborne. Most of these people are dead now. Most people in our generation don't know them. But thank God we, 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 we knew some of those. We didn't meet some of them physically. Some of them, what we read was their books. A few of them we met. I met Kenneth Hagen once or twice. You know, I visited America. And there were others, you know. And there was a great move of God. And so God told him, he said, pray this prayer for yourself. So he took the prayer from Ephesians chapter 1. Because of time, I'm just going to say it. Because when I want to go to the scripture, I will later on. But, you know, because I want to make as much time as quickly as possible you know, and that first one, uh, the scripture said, you know, it says that God, Paul prayed for the Ephesians, you know, that since the day he heard, now this is the point I want you to get. In verse 14, Paul was telling the Ephesians that they had received, they had got born again, then they had received the Holy Spirit, the speaking in tongues, he didn't talk about tongues there, but it's implied. You know, the, the, the letter doesn't say tongues there, but it's implied. And they had received what they called the earnest of the Spirit, which is a deposit of the, uh, of the power of the Holy Spirit. The word earnest is an old English word. It means down payment. Please give this to me in the Amplified Bible. This is Ephesians 1.14. Yes, it says the Spirit is the guarantee. I didn't hear you. That Spirit is the guarantee of our inheritance the first was the pledge foretaste and down payment you know if you want if you go to a shop maybe you want to buy something you don't have all the money immediately you 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 give a deposit it may be maybe it costs a hundred thousand naira so you deposit twenty thousand or thirty thousand with the promise that you will come back and pay the balance you know but you secure it by putting that deposit what God did when we got filled with the Holy Spirit with the initial evidence of speaking in tongues was he gave us a deposit of the power of the Holy Spirit as to secure us the Bible used the word seal we were sealed in fact Paul says it here you know I think in the verse before after he says, you know, we're sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So he sealed, he, 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 he gave us that deposit to guarantee. But you see, it was only a deposit. It was not the fullness. It is unfortunate. Well, I don't know if the word, I don't like using the word fortune. It is um, regrettable that many of us as Christians, born again, filled, spirit-filled Christians, when I say spirit-filled now, it means we've got the experience of the baptism of the Holy Spirit and we speak in tongues and have some degree of the manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit in our lives. Treat this deposit as if it's the fullness. And you hear things like full gospel. It's actually a misnomer. Because what we have experienced and what we preach is not the full gospel. It's a deposit gospel. <laughs> to be scripturally accurate. 
So going back to Kenneth Hagin, God told him, he said, pray this prayer for yourself. And so if Paul said, after I heard that you got this, this Ephesians chapter 1, this is verse 14. So in verse 16, Paul says, after I heard that you've got the, you, you know, I, you've got the deposit and your love and you have the right attitude, your love towards all the saints and all of that. He said, I do not cease to pray for you that God will give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened so that you will know the hope of his calling, the riches of the glory of his inheritance, the saints, and the exceeding greatness of his uh, resurrection power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. I'm just, you know, summarizing. So, Kenneth Hagen prayed that prayer for himself continuously. Prayed it, you know, morning, afternoon, night. You know, you can read it in his books. And um, after six months, Ken Hagen gives this testimony that he got more revelation in six months through prayer than he got in 14 years of pastoring. He had been a pastor and a preacher for 14 years. In those 14 years, the sick had been healed. Miracles had happened. He was a pastor, a successful one. Yet, he didn't have revelation. He said he won. He, he say he, 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 you read his book. You know. He said he was. He wonder what have I been preaching these fourteen years. You know. You know. He said the deacon boy should have asked him to come out of the rain. <laughs> this is an American expression. You know, meaning that you know I was just, you know, and he said from that time on he began to pray this prayer, and you know he got a revelation of. Now listen to me very carefully. Who we are in Christ. What we have in Christ. What we can do in Christ. He, all these years he didn't know that. He knew it in the head. But he didn't have revelation about it. And I by the grace and the mercy of God. I and not I by the grace and the mercy of God which was with me. I copied Kenneth Hagin's example. I was in England at the time. I was in school, postgraduate school. It's one of the things that led me to ministry. You know, I began to pray those prayers myself. Exact, I had exactly the same experience. I must say those prayers maybe November, December, somewhere in there, you know. And by May, June, I had so much revelation. I was sharing with the young people on Friday. I came here and I was sharing with them in Zion City Fellowship. And when I was going, some of the uh, young people, you know, escorted me to my car and we were talking. And I said, when I was your age, I was only 21 years old. I already had a lot of revelation. I wrote an article back, it's on, it's on the website. So it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. I wrote it when I was 21 years old. I didn't write it now. I wrote it 40 years ago. And if you read it, you will think I'm talking about it now. It's still as current as it was. The point I want to make is this. Uh, by praying those prayers, and I, we still pray them now. If you follow me, my teaching, you'll find that, you know, the Pauline prayers, all my books, right, Practical Guides Prayer, right from the beginning, you know, if you follow me, now a lot of people don't follow me. They hear me, but they don't follow me. You know, if you, the word follow in the Greek is mimitis, which is to mimic. You know, if you actually pray those prayers for yourself with an honest and a humble heart, you will have revelation. It will change your life, your perspective, the way you think, you know, uh, your, your, the way you read scripture and what you see when you read the Bible. And that's what my experience was, you know, and I had this great, by the grace and the mercy of God, understanding and revelation of the purpose of God in Christ. You know, the rich, you know the, the, the hope of his calling, which is Christ in us, the hope of glory, the riches of the glory of his inheritance and saints, which is, you know, instructions. Those riches are not just uh, uh, physical riches. They will bring that. But, you know, they're, they're, they're the riches, the treasures of wisdom and, and, and knowledge, you know, you know, of how to get that hope of the calling and the power with which to do it, which is the power 
that was wrought in Christ when he was raised from the dead. What I was preaching earlier on this morning during the Bible study. You know, that's how we get born again. We're born again by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So the power that raised Christ from the dead is what is injected into every human being that believes in Jesus. You know, all that came by revelation. And we were very happy. We prayed, we got revelation knowledge, we had understanding. When I came to Nigeria, I was a superstar. <laughs> you know, I say that jokingly, but truly, you know, I was, I, was, I was a Christian, I was two, three years old as a Christian, and I had more revelation than many people who are 10, 15, 20 years old. This is the truth. You know, and, uh, you know, that's how I made many friends. All my friends, like uh, my late Wale Adekoya, of blessing who's you know gone with the Lord now and, and Fred Adegoke and and Friday Becky and all, all the guys, you know, Francis Wally okay, you know. I used to come to Brother Emiko's house, you know, because we were the custodians <laughs> we were the concerns of the law. <laughs> you know, Kenneth Hagen had given um, 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 Kenneth uh, Emiko the right to sell his books and tapes in Nigeria as well as Kenneth Copeland. So everybody came to us. And guess who? I was the connoisseur. You know, I was the Joseph. You have to come and buy from me. So people come to me and say, oh, but the is can I go? I say, come and see me. <laughs> you know, that's how I made many friends. David, David, everybody. You know, everybody used to come to us in those days. It was, it was a great time. You know, but um, so we, 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 we got this understanding. We, we got this revelation. We, you know, and when I would share, people would say, wow, how did you get to know that? And then that's how they start inviting me. They would invite me to IVCU, invite me to Ilori, invite me to Ife. To, that's how I made friends with uh, Maki Adishino, you know, and, and, and Victor Padoko and all others like that, you know, because they're all students in Ife back in those days. So I would go and preach, and people say, wow! <laughs> you know, and, and Brother, um, Brother Emiko, you know, and I would go, we'll go and we'll share with the brethren, and, and, you know, because I discovered, thank you, Jesus, Revelation was rare. Most Christians didn't have it. People have been Christian 10 years, 15, 20 years. They didn't have it. They were like Kenneth Hagin was before he prayed those prayers. They were Christians. They had the Holy Spirit. They spoke in tongues. They had healing. They had some degree of miracles. But they didn't know who they were. So, and some of us got that, you know, and, you know, we made progress. But sadly, and regrettably, we thought we had it all. But we didn't. We have the full gospel. No, we didn't. Because there was a second prayer. It's in Ephesians chapter 3. Now, can Hagen didn't teach us that one. And he didn't say we should pray it. So it lay fallow for years. When I started to, when we started scripture pasture, and I started to, you know, teach and preach, you know, in the church, you know, and I wrote our books, Practical Guide to Prayer and all that, I now went to dig out from the scripture that is not just one Pauline prayer. There's another one in Ephesians 3. Then there's some in Thessalonians and there's some in Colossians. And that's all the prayers you have today in keeping yourself in the love of God in our books, you know, are a uh, 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 synthesis of all the Pauline prayers put together. But there is a new one God has given me. And that's the one I want to share with us this afternoon. It's the Ephesian 3 prayer. It's a prayer, we take bits and pieces of it, but we don't really pray it all. And this is it, it, the, the, this concept of the fullness of God. I find it very um, instructive. That Paul prayed this prayer for people who had the Holy Spirit. 
So it means that even though they had the Holy Spirit, they didn't have the fullness. Otherwise, it would be unnecessary to pray that prayer. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 3. And we're going to go back to the beginning in a minute, but I want to go to the end first. Then I'll go back to the beginning. And look at verse, I believe it's verse 20. It's verse 20. No, go to verse 19. Good. Now, the, the, the focus of this prayer, what it was supposed to deposit, what the, 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 the answer to the prayer, he said, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, hello, that you might, meaning that that's, that's, that's what God wants to achieve. That you might be filled with what? All the fullness of God. That's why I've entitled the message, The Fullness of God. All the fullness of God. It means they didn't have it. And it means, this is the very critical point. Being filled with the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues does not give you all the fullness of God. It's just a deposit. It is when you pray this prayer, the same way you pray the original Pauline prayer, and you do it consistently over time that it through it the Holy Spirit will come to minister unto you what we what is called the full all the fullness of God. You know, in our generation, nobody knows what that thing means. All we've we've read in a book, and we have some of us have some degree of revelation of it, but we haven't seen it in manifestation. It's one of the most wonderful things, the most wonderful thing that we can experience as Christians. It is filled with all the fullness of God. I'm going to try and simplify it as much as I can. Um, when I was teaching in the morning, I stumbled, you know, well, I was led by the Spirit, you know. And I didn't intend, it's not in my notes, you know. I didn't intend to talk about that. I was, you know, I was just going to uh, talk about the fact that Jesus was, you know, um, the only begotten Son. And then I went off into how God made man from the dust of the earth. And the great uh, intellectual capacity that it must have taken God to do it. In 24 hours, Pastor G, from the dust of the earth, oh God, look at this body. And look at its detailed complexity. The brain alone is a wonder. Not talk of the skeletal system, not talk of the of the of the of the nervous system, not talk of the circulatory system, not talk of the digestive system. Everything is is with scientific precision. And anybody who can do that in 24 hours is a genius. Give a lot another clap offering. Anybody that can do that. Anybody. And the Lord now was reminding me, I was sitting down here and we're praising God or something, you know, and uh, God was talking to me, you know, and he was telling me, he said, you need to understand that we were able to do it in, and he said, we, three persons of the Godhead. It wasn't one person. One person can't do it. <laughs> Anybody who does operations, these doctors will tell you, you know, you got a doctor here, you got a doctor here, you got a doctor there. I understand we have a, one of our sisters who's visiting here who's a neurosurgeon. You know, they will tell you, you cannot do, you can't do an operation alone. Because if somebody must be watching the anesthetics, another person is doing the surgery, another person, and usually you have teams. You, you won't have one surgeon. There's one guy who's working on this side, you know, as that we're looking at me there. He's a gynecologist expert. You know, you, 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 one man can't do everything. Because you've got to be watching this parameter, that parameter, this parameter. You know, you know, the, our knowledge of God has been very childish. 
as we're growing spiritually now, I now begin to understand what God did. He goes, three persons of the Godhead. Then he told me something. I was sitting down there. He said, when you come and give your main message, tell them this. You know, I, I think I've said it before, maybe three, four, five years ago. But if I haven't, this is a good time to say it. You see, man was not the first thing God had made. <laughs> God had made animals. He had made... Let me... Let's, 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 let's back up a little bit. You understand? You need to read Genesis very carefully. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Full stop. That is billions of years. And the earth became without form and void, and darkness became void. And the Spirit of God said, and let there be light. And then, you know, then the first day he made this, second day he made that, second day he made this, and all of that. In the original creation, in, in the earlier, not original, in the earlier creations, God had done a lot of things. A lot of research had gone on. If we want to use that expression. Do you understand? A lot of things had already been made. Now God wanted to make man. Man was God's greatest project. Let us, Kassele Mengara, make man in our image. And so the complexity that was inside God was about to be embedded in a creation. So you know what God did? He went to take bits and pieces from different creations that he made and upgraded them. And then planted it in us. See, so he made angels. But angels... They're like us, but they're not like us. There's something inside us that's higher than angels. There's something inside man, you know, that makes him like God. He made, he had made monkeys, he had made apes. That's why evolution is rubbish. You know, the so-called theory of evolution, it is a it is it, it is devoid of facts. It's a lie. It has to be. Are you listening to me? There's no such thing as one cell just dividing and to this kind of complexity. Some guy was one mathematician, Sir Frederick Hoyle. He did the calculation, and you know, in 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 in, 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 in uh, mathematics, we have a way of calculating probabilities. So, if you want to calculate, if you throw a dice and you want to calculate probability, it would be one over six. You know, to get one or to get six. Then if you throw two dices at the same time and you want three of them to get it, it'll be one over six times, one over six times, one over six. You know, when you have, you know, um, events that are independent of one another. So if you want to now calculate the probability that a cell will divide like this, divide like this and form this complexity, you know what you're going to get? You get one over 10 times 10 times 10, 40 times, which is 10 to the power 40. It is essentially zero. In other words, it's impossible. Give all the clap offering. It had to have an intelligent design. Somebody thinking it could never be random chance. That is scientifically and mathematically impossible. So the theory of evolution is zero. The people who are following it are dishonest. They just want to have an excuse for not serving God. Anyway. Let me get back to what I was saying. So God took, you know, from, from different things he had done and then he upgraded them, so to speak, just to use that expression, you know, to put into man. Had he not done all of those things previously, he couldn't have done man in 24 hours. Let me use a natural example. Uh, we have some of our builders here. Look at this building. Look at this ceiling. These panels were made in another factory. So when we were going to build this place and we wanted to do the ceiling, the these panels were all had already been prefabricated. So what they did was they just brought them to site and put them together and assembled them. That's what God did. 
the things that had been done before he picked from here 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 picked from here, picked from here. Boom, boom, boom. 24 hours man was ready give a lot of clap offering That's why the account in Genesis gives us the evolution, using it in the correct sense now, the, you know, the, the account. So he starts with, in the beginning, God created the heavens, plural, and the earth, uh, full stop. Then something happened, and then he made other creations. So why do you think man is last? It's the most complex. A lot of things that had been done before had to be brought in to make man. Now where am I going with this? We're talking about being filled with all the fullness of God. Now, <laughs> God wants you and I to be filled with the fullness of that type of intelligence and complexity in this life. That's why he wants you to be filled with all the fullness of God. Nobody has ever seen anything like it. When we got filled with the Holy Spirit, we had the deposit anointing. But when we're going to be filled with all the fullness of God, we're going to have the Spirit without measure. It will impart to us the ability of the mind of Christ. Meaning that we will start will be able to think like God thinks. Gone on shan with a bad rough for me, bad rough for me. That means pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. Go to Psalm one forty seven. I'm gonna to come to the mechanics in a minute. <clears throat> Today, when Pastor Williams was praying, he used the word double glory. Double glory. Double glory. You see, what we saw in Jesus' ministry was the glory of physical miracles. But what we're going to see with this fullness of God is going to be the glory of physical and intellectual miracles. We, have, we haven't seen the glory of intellectual miracles in our generation. In fact, the church has never even talked about it. It's as if it doesn't, you know, Whereas, if you go into the scriptures, you will find that the Bible calls Christ two things. He calls Christ the wisdom of God and the power of God. The church has always talked about the power, the power, power. Where's the wisdom? That's the double glory. The glory of the power and the glory of the wisdom. And you're not going to get it without the fullness of God. I'm not talking to anybody here. Am I talking to anybody here? This, your brain, is one of the most wonderful, if not the most wonderful machines. Uh, 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 it, it, it's, it's actually a bio electrical chemical. I'm trying to, you know. A bio, it's it, it, there's biology there, there's chemistry there, there's electronics there. Just keep it simple. <laughs> this brain that's inside here, it's it's, it's 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 soft. You can fold it like it's fold uh, the inside it like a uh, pastor told us. It has neurons, and then there's the, 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 there's always electrical signals. You know they're firing and all of that. You've got a hundred billion neurons. Uh, nobody knows what a hundred billion is. You know, you know, and then the neurons are interconnected. So you have over a trillion connections, interconnections. In this small thing that is inside this brain, and it is powered with the same power that I use for a 20 watt lamp. <laughs> Our computers, the computers we have now, you know, you go to the Microsoft and you go to Amazon and you go to the, you know, the, the cloud and you store things in the computer, Google and all that. They, these big, they have these, you know, what we call the cloud. They are big, big uh, computer racks. They have to be powered, you know, 24 hours with 
with, with electricity and generators and all of that. And if you want a computer that begins to approximate, it can't get there, but begins to approximate to the complexity of the brain, you're going to need, you know, a, 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 a power to, to power it. You're going to need something like the city of Ibadan. to generate the power that can handle all those, that type of memory capacity. Man is far, far behind. God does this one and uses 20 bolts. <laughs> Give him another clap offering. What are you talking about? What are you talking about a guy? You know, I, I got the greatest. You know, the more I know the Bible, the more I respect God. And the more I put the 2,000 cubits. I said, hmm. So when we were saying this morning, I bow. <laughs> I wasn't just bowing. I was bowing to a guy. I was bowing to somebody who is truly wonderful. His name is called Wonderful. Counselor. The Mighty God. The Everlasting Father. The Prince of Peace. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. The man is wonderful. He's wonderful. So he, he does all of this. So he wants us to be filled with all the fullness of God. So the God potential, the, the thing that is inside him, he wants you to put it inside us and let it show out. So our other men will say, ha! In fact, there's a scripture, I told you to get to Psalm 147, I'm going to go there in a minute, you know, but this is in, in, in Isaiah 45. It says, you know, they will say, surely God is in. How will they? Why will what will make Brother Clem? What will make them say that? Is because they would have seen God. Uh, it won't be Christians, who it will be unbelievers. Surely God is in the what we saw in Joseph was just a sample. God gave Joseph Pharaoh a dream, then God gave Joseph the interpretation. Not only the interpretation of the dream, but the wisdom of implementing the interpretation. That was not inside the dream. You see, if all you got in the dream was, there are going to be seven years of famine and seven years and that's end. So how do we solve the problem? That was not in the dream. God now gave Joseph extra. He gave him the wisdom to implement the interpretation. Are you listening to me, folks? Now, watch this. That was so spectacular, this is 5,000 years ago, that Pharaoh, who was not a Christian, he didn't know Jehovah, he didn't know God, immediately Pharaoh recognized it. He said, from when shall we find such a man? He said, seeing that God has shown you this, he said, there is none wiser. He's saying the same as Isaiah 45. Sure. He was telling Joseph, he said, surely God is in thee. Now, what are we going to do in our generation? Within these next 20 years or so before Jesus comes, 20, 30 years, you know, what are we going to do that's going to make me say, ha, surely God is in thee. I tell you what, fullness of God. The double glory. The glory of the power and the glory of the wisdom. That's what the Bible means when it says that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Speaking in tongues is a beginning, but that's not where we're going. It's, 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 it's just to start us off. Are you listening to me? And so God wants us to be filled with all the fullness of God so that we can manifest the power of the Spirit without measure, both power and intellectually let's keep it with scripture both power and wisdom power on one hand then wisdom on the other so much so that men the scripture actually says this and you're not you're not supposed to take this in a in a, in a wrong kind of way you have to be like uh, 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 um, uh, peter and, and, and the early apostles you know, and, and Paul and all of that, men will worship you. They will fall. They, they will be so odd. He says, they will fall down at thy feet and they will know that I have loved thee. 
Now you won't take it. You tell them to stand up. Don't take it. But they will. Because they will be so astounded by the power of the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God and the power of God that will be made man. Because it's what? The fullness of God. And it is this power and wisdom this fullness of power and wisdom of God that will be put in that will be manifest in us and then through us for the world to see that we will now use to preach the gospel to all the nations and close the age that is why we must now start praying this prayer I'm going to teach you now and I tweaked it a little bit the same way we've prayed the other Pauline prayers now let's go to Ephesians chapter 3 uh, Bimba don't put it up yet I'll tell you when to put it up uh, there's a prayer I've just I've just crafted nice I just I'm talking about perhaps G, a month ago about you know uh, and, and then he goes the Holy Spirit told me he said he said he said craft that prayer he said they prayed bits and pieces of it he said but I want you to craft that prayer because the time of its manifestation is here See, when the time came that God wanted to do something, he, he, he unsealed the scripture. See, there, 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 there are scriptures that are sealed. You, what, when we say they are sealed, it means that we, we won't understand them until when the time comes for its manifestation. Then God will unseal it so that we can start understanding and doing it so that we can get it. And what it promises. That's what I'm doing in this message. Filled with all the fullness of God. Now, let's look at, we, we see a road map here. Let's go to verse 16. Verse 16. Let's go to verse 15. 14. <laughs> ah, good. You see, observe, Paul had prayed one prayer for them in Ephesians chapter 1. It was the prayer for the spirit of wisdom and revelation. But it was not enough. He now gets to Ephesians chapter 3 and prays another prayer. He said, for this cause. What cause? You have to go back a few verses, but because of time, I won't do that. You know, he, he, said, he said, the revelation that was shown unto me, that wherefore I wrote unto you in a few words. Paul always likes it. Like, like Hebrews, he said, suffer ye this short word, Baba Polo. You know, you know, <laughs> go, 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 to, go, to, go to verse 1. Go to verse 1. I'm going to jump back to this verse 13 in a minute. Aha. Uh he -huh. said, for this cause, verse 2. I, I want to just quickly flip through. Verse 2, verse 2, verse 2, 3. Ah, good. How that by revelation was he made known unto me the mystery. As I wrote a four in few words, he's saying, like I told you in chapter one. Because of this, he now has to pray another prayer. So that not only will you have a revelation of this mystery, you will have the experience of it. That's the essence of this second prayer. Let's jump back to verse 14. For this cause. Don't your neighbor say which cause? I didn't hear you. Tell him the cause of the mystery. That's the reason. This mystery that he had wrote about. He said for this cause. So that it will no longer be a mystery. It, it will now become an experience. God help me. For this cause. I bow my knees. Unto the father of our Lord Jesus Christ next verse of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named 16 that he would grant you he's praying this prayer for these people and it's for us too because you know what they never experienced it in their generation they saw it by revelation they wrote it down for the end time generation that he will grant you. I didn't hear you. I remember one day this thing to be granted unto them. Eh? Give the Lord a wave offering. Not me, oh, the Lord. Okay. Say, God, look at me, oh, I'm waving. 
that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory ah, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man notice this prayer is different from Ephesians 1 Ephesians 1 is that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened this one is strength hmm to be strengthened with might by his spirit. These people already have the Holy Ghost. These guys, they have the deposit. It's that deposit that's going to strengthen you. Now I'm going to show you the prayer the way God tuned it for me. It's what you call present truth. And every one of you is hereby instructed to start from today. It is not a suggestion. It's a command and an instruction. Unless, of course, you don't want the fullness of God. You know, that's your choice. It's your choice. To be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Verse 17. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. Stop! Didn't these people have Christ? They are born again Christians. They already have Jesus. Ah, these are people who already have Christ in their hearts. You're not understanding what he's saying. He's not talking about having Christ in your spirit. He's talking about having Christ in your mind. Your heart, the word heart in the, in the New Testament is sometimes a composite term talking about spirit and soul. So when he said that Christ will dwell in you, he's talking about your soul. That Christ will dwell in your mind. That Christ will dwell in your will. That Christ will dwell in your emotions. You're not talking about being born again that you have Christ in you. already have Christ in you. That Christ, I didn't hear you, may dwell in your hearts by faith that ye, being rooted and grounded in love. You're, you see, there is no way God can trust any human being with all the fullness of God who is not rooted and grounded in love, he will become a tyrant. What is coming, the world has never seen it before. Let me make that even worse. We have never seen it before. How are we going to handle it? Love. If you're not really grounded in love, forget it folks, it ain't going to happen. See, this is not a gift, though. It's a reward. The fullness of God is not a gift. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is a gift. Salvation and going to heaven is a gift. But this one, oh, is not a gift. It's a reward of works. Not works of the flesh, but works of the Spirit. You give unto because you now went through the process. That you become rooted. I didn't hear you, folks. And grounded. In love. Next verse. May be able to comprehend with some saints. What is the what? Breadth, length, depth, and height. He's actually talking about the body of Christ. The word body of Christ is not here in scripture. But I can tell you by revelation that that's what he's talking about. All saints. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. All saints. You see... He wants you to become like God. So that you now see the church the way God sees it. Then you will now understand. Oh, God said, I don't know if I'm going to be allowed to say what I'm about to say. But I'll, I'll see if God will, will let. I won't say all, I can't say all of it. You know, but I will say some of it. You know, so you will understand the complete of the body of Christ. How each part fits, how they function, and how you are relating to them. Some years ago, this is about 20 or 25 years ago, you know, I, I got a glimpse of this. And interestingly, I got a glimpse of it, and I understood it, you know, to some degree, but 
And I started praying, but I didn't. God just tell him just recently. He said, that's why I'm going to show you at the end. I'm going to give you that instruction. You know, that you need to pray it in faith. You know, I, I got a glimpse of it because God had to deal with me because I was very arrogant. Now, I didn't know I was arrogant and I wasn't trying to be arrogant. I just was. <laughs> just like many of us. You know, we were the faith guys. Hello? We were the faith boys. You know, and we had revelation knowledge that most of the church didn't have. And so, Pastor G, you know what I'm talking about. You know, so in our hearts, we used to look down on other people. I used to. I, 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 I've changed now. My attitude has changed now. And what I did then, it wasn't that it was, it, it was bad, but it wasn't deliberate. It's just an attitude. Yeah, you know, I'd look at people like Anglicans and Methodists and, and my own revelation knowledge. I say it in my heart. I won't say it to them, of course. You know? <laughs> you know, just, you know, you, you know, we just write off people. And, and, and what we were saying was true. They didn't have the knowledge we had. They didn't have the revelation we had. But our arrogance was wrong. Let's be very arrogant. You know, there are places I can never go. They ask me to come back. Me, I want to the revelation. I want to the RK. How come I die? Because it's spirit to me. That's how we used to talk in this. Remember me and some of my friends. Ah, you know, because of my die. Because it's spirit. In our language, that means they're going to pour sand, you know, impurities into your spirit. Ah, can't talk to them. So there were churches I wouldn't go. There were people I would not fellowship with. Because some of them are not born again. Those who are born again are not filled with the Holy Spirit. They don't have any revelation. They don't understand the kind of things we're talking about. I didn't want to be contaminated. I forgot that they were in the body. So God had to change my attitude. He used this scripture. He said, you have to understand. You have different kinds of Christians. That's why breadth, length, depth, and height. And you have to love them as I love them. He said the fact that they don't have your knowledge does not stop me from loving them. So the f you have to now love them the way I love them even though they don't have the knowledge that you have. God set me free. My attitude, God just dealt with me. You know, so he starts seeing people. He said, they have different, he said, there's outer court, there's holy place. He said, but they're all in the body. He said, in the great house, there are many vessels, but they're in the house. Don't forget that. Even if it is a vessel of wood and earth, it's still in the house and it has to be loved. My attitude changed completely. So, as I go into Anglican, <laughs> Methodist, even Catholic, I push it further. I even went to Cherubim and Seraphim. I did. My wife and I, I went to Sele. They're looking at me. <laughs> now, I'm not saying what they do in Sele is right. <laughs> And I'm not asking you to go to sell it. But what I'm saying is this. You know, my attitude changed. So I became open. And I realized that even in the celestial church, there will be people who are, who are hungry for God. There's a particular story. Pastor Kunle knows this story. Because Pastor Kunle's dad and mom were in celestial church of Christ. That's where, can you believe that's where Pastor Kunle was brought up? This is the same part Pastor Kunle. And, uh, and, and Wale, Wale, which one was your own? Cherubim and Seraphim. Can you believe that both of them are pastors in this church? Give the Lord a clap offering. There is nothing God cannot do. True story. Wale, Wale, Wale was going to, a, his mommy used to take him to his Cherubim and Seraphim church in Forest Hill in London. And many years later, when Pastor Wale and they were going to preach in London, we used to preach for somebody, you know, whose house of the, the church they were using was next to that church. And Pastor Wale said, Pastor, that's the church I used to go to. 
and we'll have a big laugh about it. But see, God spoke to me and said, oh, no, no, no. So one particular man, you know, uh, he's still there, you know, he was reverend. He was still in the celestial church, but he was born again. And he's filled with the Holy Spirit. So he, he, we, we used to have this prayer. Pastor G, you remember the prayer seminars we used to have? You know, and people would come from all over Nigeria. They would come from Kaduna. They come, you know, we used to have here in church. And people come and learn about prayer. So the man came. And an elderly man. He's older than me. You know, he's in his 70s now. You know, and he, he came. He said, ah, pastor, this is your teaching of prayer. is wonderful. And, you know, I've learned so much. And I, I'm so blessed. He said, please, will you come to my church and teach us? So I said, which church? <laughs> Celestial church. In Lagos. But I knew the man was born again. He said, there are people there who want, you know, want to do the right thing. You know, we went. My wife and I, we spent the night with them him and his wife in his ha- in their house and went to their church, took our shoes off. True story. <laughs> yes. I know you wear shoes, you don't wear shoes. It doesn't affect the anointing. Come on, folks. <laughs> if you go to a place where they don't wear shoes, take your shoes off. If you go to a place where they wear shoes, wear your shoe. <laughs> you won't change the Holy Ghost in you. So, to cut a long story short, my wife and I went there. You know, I would taught and preach for them. You know that man pulled out of the Celestial Church? That church today is a gospel church. He's changed the name. They're a full gospel church now. Pentecostal. Because God changed my attitude. The breath. right in the sense that yes they didn't have revelation knowledge and uh, and uh, you know I have to watch my fellowship all that was right but the attitude was wrong so God had to deal with me he had to deal with me and change my understanding and ch- as a consequence of this prayer I began to comprehend with all saints look at the next expression it's in verse 19 and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge. In other words, to know the love that is greater than knowledge. The fact that the guy has knowledge, doesn't have knowledge, you still love them. Love that is greater than knowledge. Knowledge is important. But love is greater. And so you have to be able to relate to every Christian with love based on that knowledge. So when you go to outer court Christians, to use that expression, you have to relate to them at their level. Don't go there and start showing off and telling them what you know and how they do, how they don't know anything and how God is going to destroy all of them. <laughs> because he's not going to destroy them. He's going to look after them. He's going to have mercy on them. Some of them will change. Some of them will not change, but they will still go to heaven. Because the prerequisite for going to heaven is not revelation knowledge. The prerequisite is accepting Jesus or as Lord and Savior as the thief on the cross. He had no revelation knowledge, zilch knowledge. He had nothing except to believe on the Savior. And he went to heaven. Jesus said, today you will be with me in paradise. And there's still many like that. Some people don't want to grow. Now God wants them to grow, but they don't want to grow. And then God said, look, that the spirit may be saved in the day of Christ. That's having, the, you know, uh, uh, comprehending with all saints. Having the love of Christ, which is greater than knowledge. No, no, 
everybody's going to do everything we're going to do. Not everybody's going to believe everything we're going to believe. But we have to love all of them. And have a right attitude towards them. It was that wrong attitude I had. I went to England. And one of my cousins, you know, was attending an Anglican. Well, they don't call it Anglican. They call it Church of England. That's what they call it in England. You know, Church of England, you know, church. And she was, she was a part of the, an evangelical group inside the church. There were Indians and, 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 and Nigerians and, and, and Caucasians, you know, whites. And, you know, it was a mixed, mixed group, you know. So I was visiting, this was in the 90s, you know. We went to England on holiday or something. And she said, ah, she said, Pastor, please, will you come to our church? You know, now you're around. Please come and, come and, come and teach us. Come, come to our church. Ah, I said, your church, sir. You know, you know, Church of England, all of that. She said, "Ah, he said, yeah." He said, "We have some born again people in our group." He said, "You know, and he said, you know." I said, "Okay, I'll come." By that time, God had dealt with me, so, you know, I went to the church. It's old, very old cathedral. You know, these old English churches. You know, in one neighborhood. You know, when I went in, when I got there, the Holy Ghost said. Don't come to show off. You are not here to tell them how much you know. He said, you are, come, you are here to bless them. He said, don't go to tongues. They are not ready for that now. Just tell them, speak to the mountain. <laughs> the mountain will go. <laughs> Keep it simple. Don't say a word about all this other stuff. exactly what I did. I just took Mark 11, 23. I preached a simple faith message. You know how you, you know what you say affects your life and I give examples and all of that. Ah, they were so blessed. I didn't say a word about tongues. <laughs> God had, the Holy Ghost had warned me because there were a lot of people there who would be offended. See, it doesn't mean we're watching down our message. It just means we're comprehending. So you know what I did? I, I, I finished preaching. I can never forget it. I came down. You know, you know this. You know these uh, Anglican churches. The place where the preacher preaches is on top. You know, so you have to climb the thing. <laughs> you know, and the guy let me do it. You know, the, the, the vicar or pastor or whatever it was. It was a white guy. You know, and so when I finished preaching all of that, you know. As I came down the stairs, one of the old women, she must have been maybe in her 80s or 90s. I can never forget it. She came up to me. She said, uh, Reverend, I want to thank you for coming. You sound like the preachers of old. I was so blessed by your message. That was what God sent me there to go and do. I did my bit and I left. Comprehending with all saints. Only God knows what God did with it. So when, I get, when I get to heaven, I'll know. I don't know now. You see? So that's what God is trying to tell us. It is only when you know the love of Christ, which is greater than knowledge, that you can be filled with all the fullness of God. It is a prerequisite. All these things, Christ will dwell in your heart by faith. You become rooted and grounded in love. You're able to comprehend with all saints the length, breadth, and depth of height that you know, uh, you know the love of Christ is past and all. If you don't have all of those things, God will never trust you with the fullness. So what we have now, speaking in tongues, is not the fullness. It's the earnest. It's the deposit. Are you listening to me? And so God wants us to be filled with the fullness. I've just given you a little peek. You know, the fullness of the wisdom, the fullness of the power. Now go to Psalm 147. I'm going to close in five minutes by the grace of God. Psalm 147. I'm talking about the ability of the mind of Christ. I just want to give you a peek. Hallelujah. It's a sample. Psalm 147, I believe it's in verse 7. Yeah, yeah. Good, good, good. Verses, I think it's either 4 and 5 or 5 and 6. But let's read it. Say, great is the Lord. I didn't hear you. And of what? 
His understanding is limited. Now, that God wants to fill you. Filled with all the fullness of God. Next verse. I think it's verse 6 or verse 4. No, verse five, 4. Go up, go up. It's verse 4. It must be verse 4. Uh-huh. Nekashele Mengara. Brother Clem is in the spirit. <laughs> he telleth the number of stars. He calleth them all by their. That's why he said in the next verse that his, his understanding is infinite. If you know just a little bit about cosmology, not much, if you know just a little bit about cosmology, cosmology is a study of the cosmos. You know. Let me blow your mind a little bit. See, this sun, that is the one that is shining outside now, is a star. I said that earlier on today. You know, and it is providing the, watch this, the gravitational force that the planets in our solar system are rotating around. So, the Earth is, is just one planet out of about nine or ten of them. You know, you've got Mars, you got Earth, you got Venus, then you got the big, you know, um, gassy stars like, you know, um, um, Jupiter and Saturn and all of that. You know, all that whole system is rotating around one star. Our star is called the yellow star. There, there are different kinds of stars. Don't let's get there. You know, now the important thing you want to understand is this this our solar system is one of billions inside this galaxy which is called the Milky Way galaxy. There are billions of galaxies like the Milky Way galaxies that contain billions of stars. Just that. How many people have a calculator here? It's on your... It's on your mobile phone. Now, when you get home, don't do it now. Just do 10. Then put 10 times 10. Then 10 times 10. Just do it. When it gets to 99, you'll say, <laughs> It can't do more than that. The capacity of the memory cannot handle anything. It goes from 10 to power minus 99 to 10 to power plus 99. That's the limit of the, you know, of, of, of what it can handle. Now, the amount of stars that are inside our soul, our universe, <laughs> because you've got, the, you've got the solar system, then you've got the galaxy, and then you now have, you know, the, 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 the universe. You know, our trillions. We, we, we can't even number them. Now, God knows all of them by name. Give him a clap offering. I mean, if you can't shout. That's what he's saying. Look at, you know, no, no. David took time to meditate a little bit. And David didn't have telescopes. They didn't have all of that back in those days. He would just look at the stars like Abraham and just have an idea. Book book. But we now know that it's beyond the capacity of any computer to contain. And this person, who we call our father, the Bible says he is of great power. His understanding is infinite. He calls, he calls, he tells the number of the stars and he calls them by name. But I haven't finished with you yet. He's about to put that same inside you. It's called the fullness. Pastor G, this is one I am living for. There is nothing else. You know, when you understand this, sin is a waste of time. You see, unless you don't know what we're talking about. You know, things like sin is so unattractive. I haven't got time. I want to have the ability of the mind of Christ. Can you imagine in your mind you're able to call the stars by name? Oh, you get a Nobel Prize. Easy. <laughs> it's a 
sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. No wonder the Bible says, they will say, surely God is in thee. It's coming. It's here. Now, Pastor Brimbo, put up that prayer and we'll close. So, in the light of all of this, I am instructing and I am commanding you. I am not suggesting those of you who are my disciples. Now, not everybody is my disciple. <laughs> no, it's, uh, no, I know, I know, I know so who, those who are. <laughs> if you consider yourself to be one of my disciples, when I say my, it's not me, it's Jesus' disciple, or through me, you know, then you will take this as a command and an instruction. It is not a suggestion. You need to pray this prayer starting from today for yourself. <laughs> Some people are taking the photograph of the mobile phone. <laughs> Don't worry. We've, we, you know, that's the good thing about um, electronics. You know, all our books now are on Amazon. So all they just do is they just upload it. So if you go and download the book today, you're going to find it there. Hello? It just means you have to buy it again. But then the Bible says, buy the truth and sell it not. <laughs> Come on, folks. Didn't he say so? <laughs> Talk to me, man. You say, now this is how you pray this prayer. This the Holy Spirit taught me. This one is not inside the Bible. This is in the Bible, it's based on the Bible verse. Now, now watch. Father, we pray that you grant us or me. If you like, you can make it singular, make it plural. According to the riches of your glory, to be more. Everybody shout more. You see, because this is a continuous thing. It's not a prayer you just pray once. To be more. You say, I'm already strengthened with might. But I want to be more. Ever say, to be more. Strengthened with might. By your spirit in our inner man. So that Christ will dwell more. Ever shout it more. It was the Holy Ghost who gave the business. More. In our hearts by faith. That will become more. Rooted and I'm, I, I, as a person by the grace and the mercy of God, I am rooted and grounded in love. But I want to be more. More rooted and grounded in love. Next verse. Next part of the prayer. That we may be able to comprehend more with all saints. What is the breadth, length, depth, and height of the body of Christ? And so to know more the love of Christ. Which surpasses knowledge that we might be filled with all the fullness of God. That's where we're going, folks. Christians who will pray this prayer with a honest and a humble heart, with tongues and groanings and all the other things we've been taught, you know, this does not do away with every other thing we know, we will continue to do all of that, will be rewarded. With the fullness of God. We will not operate the spirit with measure. We're going to operate the spirit without measure. You will become. There's no other way to say it. Prof. A wonder. That's the, it's true. It's, it's, it's to be a wonder. See, behold I. And the children that God has given. After what? Signs and wonders. Not only will you do wonders. You yourself will become a wonder. A person that has this ability of the mind of Christ whose understanding becomes infinite. And you know your, 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 your brain has the capacity. The best people like Einstein, they say they're only using 15%, 10, 15% of their brain. And then God now puts Zoe inside that brain, glory to God, and upgrades it and it starts operating at 100%. All neurons firing. All, all the synapses and everything, everything is working at full capacity. You look at something and it's, you photograph it. Don't be looking at me funny. <laughs> Some people are saying, can these things be so be careful? <laughs> you know, the man I got to close. His name was Roland Bach. Roland Bach, it was his children that wrote the book Angels on Assignment. It was Roland Bach that had the experience of being translated to heaven. 
you, Gabriel appeared to him oh, maybe 10, 15 times. This was 1977, somewhere in there. You know, and you know, he had all kinds of experiences. You know, and uh, I, I believe it because not because it happened, not because it Gabriel, because because it's in line with the Word of God. But anyway, Roland Buck had an experience, and God took him to the throne room. The truth, you know, go and read it. It's in that book, Angels and Assignment. You know, and uh, in that experience, he, God told him two things that I was awed. That time I was still in Imperial College. You know, one of the things, these are the things I read at that time that made me say, well, I'm going to follow this thing. I'm not going to waste my time in uh, academia. Because if I get this one, all the other one, I'm going to get it. And it's already happening. So, you know, I, I, he said that God told him this. God said, I'm going to give you an overlay of truth. At that time, he had scientists working. This was in Bose, in Idaho, in, uh, in, in, in the U.S. You know, they, I'm talking about 1977, you know, over 40-something years ago. So, you know, he now began to tell him about, you know, black holes. They didn't know what black holes was then. They knew, theoretically, but they now said, ah. So when he now got back to the, when he came out of the vision, you know, then something else happened. You know, God told him 120 things that were going to happen within the next six months. And he saw it on a piece of paper. But the paper, immediately after God showed him the paper, the paper just like burnt up you know it just crumbled he said but what was inside that paper was stamped in his mind you see when you photocopy something do you understand everything that is on the original is stamped on the new paper you don't tr you see if i have the photocopy of folks listen to me if i have the photocopy of something if i want to see what's inside I just look this is clear i don't have to try and memorize it because I have the photocopy in front of me. Now imagine that your mind is the photocopy. That's what happened to Roland Bach. His mind, God stamped every all those answers, he stamped it in his mind, and then he burnt the paper. You don't need the paper anymore, he's got a better one inside. He said he could still see. And one of the things, why, why I remember so well, you know, is that one of the things he said, he said that the next Pope, that time there was one Pope, that Pope died. The Pope John Paul that came, God had told Roland Bach and that he was not going to be Italian because he was Polish. And, and you know, God told him, he said, God is wonderful. You know what he told him? He said, you know, he said, the Pope is important. You know, you would think God wouldn't like the Pope. <laughs> but you see, comprehend with all sins. You know what God told him? He said, he said, he's important because he has an influence on a lot of my people. So I am interested in the choice. I said, he's going to be the next Pope. And that's exactly, this man was just looking. And that's exactly what happened. And he's one of the best Popes that we've had in recent times. He said, he said he was looking like it. He, he used the word printing press. When you impress something, that is what's called the ability of the mind of Christ. You just look at something and it's stamped. Anytime you want to just look inside your heart, it's, it's already written there. You don't have to try and remember it. You remember, but can you handle this, doctor? Do you understand? Your mind becomes so upgraded that remembering becomes like looking at a paper. So your, 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 your memory is instant. Because once you just like this, you see it. You know, the problem we're having now, you know, those of us into computers, Laolo, you'll be able to appreciate this. You know, <laughs> we've got RAM and ROM. RAM is random access memory. ROM is read-only memory. If you put a hard disk and you connect it to your computer, do you understand? 
the computer, uh, the, the CPU has to go and fetch. He will go and fetch the information. In, he does it in very fast time, very quickly, in, in, in milliseconds. You know, you go and fetch the information and put it inside the RAM. When you put it inside the RAM, then, then you now see it on your screen. Okay? That process takes a little bit of time. Sometimes nanoseconds, sometimes you see it instantly. Sometimes, if it's a lot of information, you know you have to wait. So you are waiting, then it's going, vroo, 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 then finally it downloads, then you now see it. Amen? Yeah, because it's, there's, a, there's a time lag between when the information can be fetched and when the information can be deposited. Now, imagine a situation where your mind is so operating at such a high level of efficiency that your fetch and return time is instant. That's what we're talking about. You see, now, the way you're operating now, you have to go and fetch. So you are trying to remember. It's there. So you go and then when you, oh, I remember. But imagine it's where you're always remembering. Because it's inside the mind already. The mind is developed. It's called the ability of the mind of Christ. Stand to your feet. I've got to stop. I don't want to leave here this afternoon. <laughs> Pastor Wallace, as you keep going, <laughs> see me in my office. <laughs> Folks, go, we've got to close. We've got to close. This is what's coming. This is what's coming. Filled with all the fullness of God. The fullness of the wisdom and the fullness of the power. That's why it's double glory. You can understand why Jesus said, the works I do, you will do, and greater. See, Jesus did the power, and then he left the wisdom for us. Solomon, exactly. Uh, greater than Solomon is here. Solomon had a little bit of it, but just very little. You know, that's why I said he spoke 3,000 proverbs. You know, and he talked about, about animals and plants and all of that. He just had a little, the, you know, what, and it was Old Testament. Better Testament established upon better promises. Folks, I want the fullness of God. I'm not satisfied with just speaking in tongues. Thank God for that. It's a good beginning. It's a great deposit. It's a great foundation. But I want the full, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. And watch this. I will not be satisfied with anything less. And neither will I die until I see it. With long life will I satisfy him and show him. Don't die if you don't get the fullness of Christ. Not in this generation. The seals have been opened. It's now available. Let's talk to God. Let's talk to God. Let's talk to God. Let's talk to God. Oh, Jesus. Glory be to God. We're beginning to understand what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Let's talk to God this afternoon. See, in your heart, start talking to God. Say, God, I want the fullness of God. This one that you've written in Ephesians chapter 3. And I understand that to get it, I have to pray. To be strengthened with more might. So I will, my Christ will dwell more in my heart by faith. That I'll become more rich and grand in love. That I'll be able to comprehend more with all saints. That I will know more. The love of Christ will surpass knowledge then I'll be qualified. It's a road map. Glorious things are These are the glorious things. Zion. Zion. He who was
can shake our sure repose. Glory to God. Father, we confess our sins and so we clean with the blood from all unrighteousness. In Jesus' name we have life. Lord, have mercy on us as we pray. Father, I thank you for your word that has come to me this afternoon. Oh, Father, thank you for these exceeding great and precious promises. You have said in your word and now we are seeing it is so that I has not seen neither has ear heard neither has it entered the heart of men the things that you have prepared for those that love you father these things you have prepared i want to be a partaker of them i want to experience in my life in this time in this generation being filled with all the fullness of god the fullness of your wisdom and the fullness of your power so that I will become a wonder not only to myself but to my generation and then take your glory to all the corners of the earth every tribe every tongue and every kindred preaching and demonstrating the gospel of the kingdom so that the end can come father I understand this help me Lord 
have mercy on me. Help me to set this in my heart. Like Jesus set his face to go to Jerusalem. Help me set my face to acquiring the fullness of God. To experience all the fullness of God. Help me not to be satisfied with anything less. With mediocre Christianity. Help me. Help me to press toward the mark for this prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus being filled with all the fullness of God in Jesus name mercy Lord mercy father in Jesus' name, we're going to share the grace. I want to call the benediction in a minute. But I want to say this to you. You can now understand what I've just preached to you. If it wasn't that it was in the Bible, you can never you would it, 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 it sounds like fables. But it's the truth. Because I didn't draw it out of heart, it's inside the Bible. You know, and God is looking for some people. just said that's what it is it's, I said he, he said you are son of God you say I blaspheme he said he blaspheme he said is it not written in your law I said ye are God this is growing into the fullness of your God potential this is going from being a caterpillar to becoming a butterfly. We only believe in caterpillars because caterpillars we've seen all our lives. But God wants a bunch of butterflies to fly out and the world will see their beautiful colors. See, if you've never seen a butterfly before, you will never believe a caterpillar can become a butterfly. I didn't say you are God. God found so. I say you are gods. You are like God. Now show it. So that when the people talk to you, say, Ah, God is in thee. That's what he wants. He said that the world will be, you know, they'll be astounded. And it's not to show off, and it's not to oppress, it's to invite. You see me, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like God now, but you too can become like God. In fact, you're made in the image and likeness of God. 
you're only distorted because of the fall. Now come and accept Jesus, get born again, and you too can become like me. That's the whole point. And you know what? It's going to be very attractive. Many people will join us. See, there are people who are not Christians now. They are watching on the sidelines. They're just watching. Looking at all the rubbish we're doing on television and be getting money and misbehaving all over the whole place, sinning, fornicating, adultery. And they say, these guys aren't serious. But if they see a bunch of people that are filled with all the fullness of God. A lot of people who are standing on the sidelines will rush in. Then shall come to pass that which is written, that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be exalted above all the hills, and all the nations shall flow into it. Why? They will see something that has never been seen before. And they will come. Join hands with somebody. On the Air has been brought to you by Christ Life Ministries, the outreach arm of the Scripture Pasture Christian Center. You can be a part of this program by becoming a faith partner with Christ Life Ministries. For details, contact Christ Life Ministries, number 12, Oshutoku Avenue, Bodija Ibadan. You can also download our weekly messages from our website, www.spcconline.org, while our email address is scripturepastor at spcconline.org. You're welcome to worship with us at the Scripture Pastor Christian Center Auditorium, Polytechnic Road, Songo Ibadan. God bless you.